Good afternoon, saints of the Lord Most High. I said good afternoon, saints of the Lord Most High. How are you doing this afternoon? Um, today I'm going to bring you a scripture. I'm privately recording it, um, mainly because I forgot to record it during service. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's pray that, you know what, that the Lord speaks unto you that you get a message, you, you get something out of this message. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. First and foremost, we want to ask you for uh, to forgive us for any of our sins, Father God. Father God, may you open our hearts and our minds, and may you minister unto each and every one of us this afternoon, Father God. Heavenly Father, we're praying that for those that are listening, for those that are listening, we pray, Father God, that you know you can just uh, just reach each and every one of them. That when they hear your word, Lord, that they know that it is you, Father God. Please uh, let me decrease so you can increase. So it is not my words that are coming out, but they are your words. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hmm. It's been an interesting couple of weeks for me. Uh, I, I, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of things, and I'm sure a lot of you have been dealing with a lot of things yourselves. Um, it's it's never easy when 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 you go through things, and it's never easy when the enemy attacks us because facts are facts. He doesn't quit. He continues moving forward. So we have to do the same. We have to. Keep moving forward. We have to let the Father guide us into the right direction, into the right path. Because without God, without Christ in our lives, we are nothing. Amen? Mm. Today's message. Uh, I usually don't title my message, but I don't. But you know what? I think today is important. I'm calling today's message, You Don't Know Me. Yes, so in today's message that, I, that I'm calling it, you don't know me. First and foremost, let's go to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, we're in chapter 1. And we're just going to keep on reading until I stop, okay? So I'm going to give you <clears throat> roughly a couple minutes. <clears throat> if you have to pause... Um, if you have to pause while you're while you're searching for it, then pause. Um, but I'm just gonna give you a couple minutes anyway. So uh, again, it's the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Um, I'm dealing with a uh, bad cough and cold and whatnot. So, the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. So, starting the first verse. <clears throat> the words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. <clears throat> it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to 
all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto me, <clears throat> excuse me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You don't know me. Talk about how many people say it on Mori and, and other shows and what it means, right? But no, here in that scripture, what does it say? It says, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I redeemed thee, prophet unto the nations. How many times have we said, you don't know me, to other people? How many times have I said it? I've said it quite a few times. And I've said it to church members. I've said it, you know, I, I say it to a lot of people. I say, you don't know. See, someone, see, there's a difference between, you know, uh, uh, in the ways that you say it. You know, when, if, if you're watching Maury Povich, if you're watching another one of those TV shows, and they're coming out being booed, say, oh, you don't know me, you don't know. They're saying, you don't know, you do not know me. You don't know what's going on. You don't know, um... You don't know what's really happening, so why are you booing me? You know, the way this whole television thing works, that you know, they get the audience to try to uh, all re get them all revved up, you know, to boo or to cheer or something, you know. But but when I say you don't know me, I I I, I either say it as in you don't know me, meaning you don't know nothing about me, you you can't say, you know, it's you don't know anything, you know, at all, or I say it as you may know who I am, but you don't know my struggles. You don't know what I've been through. You know, I, I've only told you things that I've wanted to reveal to you about my life. But you don't know me. See, I was, in a, I, I was put in a situation a while back. And in the way that... And the way that I was being talked to, you know, it was like very sarcastic and it was, it was just very inappropriate, you know. And I and they were like, and I said, well, I said, you don't know me. I said, what you mean you don't? I said, exactly, you don't know me. You know who I am. You know the things that I've told you about me, but you don't know me. Because you know what? I've been through so many things, you know. It's, I've been through things that someone of my age usually hasn't gone through i've been through i mean as, as they say i've been through hell and back you know with my health and other things that i've that, that i've been suffering from since i was born you know but god has seen me through it but the fact is is that someone thinks that they can you know uh base an opinion or something on you and they don't know you no you can't i have not see i have not once done anything that will jeopardize my testimony. So, the outward appearance is not an excuse of trying to say something and whatever. Get to know me. I mean, really get to, I mean, the thing about me is, that I have been betrayed. I have been stabbed in the back but, and so on and so on by so many different people that I have trust issues. I can't trust mankind, but I trust God 100% about what I reveal to them. And <clears throat> the truth is, you know, and the truth is, is that, is that, you know, we all sort of need to do that. Because whatever we reveal to the wrong person can be used against us. So, you know, you have to be, you, know, you got to pray to God to give you, you know, uh, uh, the spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment, which is one of the nine spiritual gifts of the spirit. And the fact is, is that 
God will reveal to you who you, you should talk to and what you should tell them. You know, I've been, I've been through hell and back and so, you know, I'm only, I just turned 33 February 23rd of this year, 2016. But I've been through hell and back and, 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 and worse on, with my health and a bunch of other things. But God has seen me through it. And there's so many other things that I've been through that I just don't reveal it. I don't. And the facts are is I can't trust people. But I trust God. God knows me. God knows what I've been through. God knows because he has seen me through it all. He has given me the strength to push forward. He has given me the encouragement, the motivation that I need to keep moving forward. I have I take time to get to know him. I read his word. I pray to him. I you know, I I'm taking that time to be his friend, you know, and yes, you know what, as a friend, I can be, I can disappoint him because I'm fallible, but God is not fallible. So when you take that time to get to know him, to be a friend to him, he was, he will be a friend to you. I have a sermon, you know, since I'm, post, I'm posting this on Facebook, I have a sermon where I'm talking about being a friend of God. And, you know, I, 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 Preach that sermon at, at this church in East Hartford, a wonder, you know, wonderful um, church ministry. Um, Anointed Tabernacle of Jesus Christ with uh, Pastor Belcher. And, and I was talking about, in that sermon, I was talking about how to be a friend of God, how to become a friend of God. What is a friend? And I broke it down. So when you get the chance, um, <clears throat> you know, when you get the chance, listen to it. And... Facts are facts. It's it's one of those things where God is the very best friend. Just like Israel Halton said, he said, I am a friend of God. He calls me a friend. You know, Jesus Christ told his disciples, is like, you know, you're no longer servants, for a servant does not know the things of his master. But you are my friends. Why did Jesus call them? Is because they spent so much time together. That he revealed so much to them, and, and and they revealed so much to him. They got to know each other. They've gotten really, really close. So it's no longer, hey, you're not a servant. You're my friend. So when, like I was saying earlier, when I'm Mori Povich, I'm Mori Povich. You know, you oh, you don't know. Well, it's because nobody does know them. We don't know. Them. All we know is what one person is saying, and that's it. You know, and. Nowadays, these talk shows are just so phony. It's not even funny. Now, when I say you don't know me, I, you know, for the most part, I'm meaning you know who I am. You can point me out in a crowd. You can tell people a few things about me, but you don't know me. You don't know my struggles. You don't know my strife. You don't, you don't know anything of what I've gone through and what I continue to go through. Because there's a lot of things that I'm still going through. But I don't tell people about it. So somebody makes a, a judgment call thinking that, oh yeah, you know, <clears throat> Pastor Josue is that a, well, how do you know? Do you know me? No. You know, in my life I've been suffering through a lot of health issues. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mention a couple of things. I suffered through a lot of health issues. I mean, I was under a ton of medication for so many, so many years. I mean, it's it's not funny. There's that's just part of me. See, the facts it, with me, I'm 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 kind of you know I'm like the clown. You know, I'm happy on the outside, but on the inside, I'm not. I don't want I don't want anybody to end up the way I am. I mean, on a daily basis, I'm continuing to get to know God, and God is continuing to refresh my spirit, refresh my soul, and bring a smile to my face. And it took me a long time to truly love my <clears throat> to truly love myself after what I've been through. And I've learned that people cannot be trusted. Well, certain people. And I'll be honest with you, one thing about me is like, the only, the only 
two people that truly, truly know me. And I'm talking about that knows everything about everything about everything is number one, God, because I can't I, I, I can't hide anything from him, nor do I want to. And my mom. Not any of my ex-girlfriends, not, no, just those two. Not any other ministers that I know, not any vegans, uh, nobody. Except for those two people. <clears throat> Excuse me. So can you just, can you just imagine it, you know, imagine you're me. You're going through this, that, but you don't tell anybody. You suffer in silence. Yeah. You don't know me. But God knows me. God knows the truth. He knows exactly what has happened. He knows exactly, you know, how I reacted. He knows exact everything. So does it bother me when, when somebody thinks negatively of me? No. As long as God knows the truth, as long as God knows who I am, knows what I actually did, then I, I have nothing to worry about. Why? Because vengeance is his. So if anybody tries anything stupid, I leave it up to God. Like the song says, God's got it. Of course nobody knows me. And I keep it that way. Because anytime I've taken a chance on somebody, I've been betrayed, I've been stabbed in the back. Facts are facts. You know, one of the things is that, you know what, let's go real quick. I'm going to read this. This The parable of the ten virgins. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to give you a quick minute. Now, this is Jesus talking about the, the parable of the ten virgins. And it says, this is Jesus speaking, and, then, and it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto, unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye not know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now in the first scripture that I read in Jeremiah, 
he's talking to Jeremiah. He says, before you you were in your mom's belly. I'm just paraphrasing. He says, before you were in your mom's belly, I knew you. And I ordained you a prophet. Now here in this parable, it's talking about the ten verse, the five that were foolish. He says, no, I don't know you. I don't know you. Well, what does that mean? Well, Jesus Christ was talking about our relationship with him. Jesus Christ was talking about how that we, the church, we have to be ready at all times because we don't know when he's going to come to lift up the church, lift up his bride. Too many people out there, they're just... They're not, they're not doing anything to get to know Christ. They're not doing anything for their salvation. They're, they're like the five foolish virgins. They didn't have enough oil. They, they weren't ready. And when the time comes, if you're not ready, he's going to turn you around and say, I know you not. Every day we must continue to get to know Jesus Christ. Every day we need to spend time with him. Get to know him. So when the day comes, he knows who you are. When he opens that book of life, your name is written in the book of life. And he knows you. We don't want to be like the five foolish who weren't ready. We have to carry our lamps filled with oil plus extra vessels to hold extra oil. Why? Because we are waiting. We are waiting for the bridegroom. We don't know when he's coming. So we have to be ready for anything. And the way that we're ready is by getting to know our Lord and our Savior. And the more we get to know him, the more oil, that anointing, will be given unto us. So, you know, when the time comes, we're ready. We, you know, there, there, there's not going to be any excuse to go back to get more oil, no. Because by that time, it's too late. Jesus Christ wants to get to know you on a deep and personal level and we should want to do the same thing get to know him on a deep and personal level because me personally when the time comes I I want I want to make sure that he says I know you welcome I don't want him to shut the door and say I don't know you. I don't. Facts are facts, my friends. You know, in this world, in this world, you have so many people that condemn. They don't know you. They don't know anything that, you know, you make one little mistake and they're already condemning you. And they will condemn you. And they will condemn you. It doesn't matter what it is. Because they don't know you. But Jesus Christ knows you. God knows us. Which is why he made that sacrifice. Sending his, his only, one and only son to die for us, to die for our sins. He knew that we were going to mess up. And through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And given that other chance. And all we have to do is accept that gift. All we have to do is get to know Jesus Christ as our own personal Lord and Savior. As our friend. 
Let's not be foolish. Let's not be foolish the way the world is. The world will stab you in the back. They will betray you. The world will do so much nonsense to you. It's not even funny. That's why I always say I don't care what mankind says about me. I don't, you know, I've been betrayed so many times and whatever. But you know what? That's fine. That's why I don't follow mankind. I follow, I follow Christ. That's why I tell my congregation, don't follow me, but follow the one that I follow. Don't worship me, but worship the one that I worship. Don't praise me, but praise the one that I praise. See, I'm still man. I'm a man of God, but I'm still man. And you know what? And with that, it means that there's the possibility that I'm going to fail at something. And even though I do fail at something, through Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Through Jesus Christ, I am re-strengthened, renewed. And I continue, and I get back on my horse and continue moving forward. My job as a minister is to show you the one that I follow. Because I, you know, I'm nobody special. I, I say it like this: I'm nobody special. I am a man that God has chosen to bring the word. But other than that. I'm nobody special. I'm just like you. I am just like you. I have my faults. I have my my errors. I have you know. I commit my sins just like everybody else. Get to know the one true God. Get to know Him. All right, my friends, I'm going to cut this short today. I pray that, you know, that, that the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Ghost reached somebody. I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ, I want you to say a quick prayer with me, and then I'm going to pray for for everybody else. So if there's a special petition that you have, you know, hold it in your heart. And I will pray for that. So first, if, if you don't know Jesus Christ, or if you want to renew your relationship with Him, pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word that you have brought unto us. Father God, please forgive us for our sins. For those of us that don't know you, we want or we want to renew our relationship with you. We ask that you come into our hearts and into our lives. Jesus, we're praying and we're asking that you become our Lord and our Savior. Be, be the Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer, you live in Connecticut, and you're looking for a good Bible study group, you know, um, if you're not a part of a church yet, but you're looking for a good Bible study group, you're looking for, you know what, just give me a contact here on Facebook, also in that email that's on the graphic, and we'll get you started. Heavenly Father, we come to your name with Jesus, Father God, there are many people out there that, that they have a special petition, Lord God, whatever it is, we... Bring it to you. We bring it to you in the name of Jesus. Father God, if we have people that are sick, we rebuke the sickness in the name of Jesus. We cancel all assignments of the enemy, Father God. Father God, whatever special petition somebody has, whether it is because of a sickness, because of a job, or whatever it is, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we ask you to handle it. Take it over, Father God. Father God, may you lead and guide each and every one of us as we move forward. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends. You know, um, I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. 
Again, if you're if you're in Connecticut, you're looking for a church home or just a good Bible study group or anything, just give me a contact. Give me a contact here on Facebook or in the email address listed on the uh, in the graphic of the video, and you know we'll get started. We'll get something started. You know, um, I'm you know I, I I'm bilingual. I speak English and Spanish. So if you know you have a family member that you want to bring along that speaks only Spanish, hey, bring them along. I I can translate. <laughs> Always remember that I love each and every one of you. May God bless you all. All right? Goodbye.